Welcome to my channel. It's a new day, so I'm going to do six more requested reactions. But before I do that, I have something special I want to share with you. As I'm sure many of you know, as you should know, uh, I believe in God. I'm a Christian. I don't go to church, but I do believe in God, and I do read the Bible. And I share my faith with you in every video by praying for you. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to you if I want to share something with you that has to do with the Bible. Now, I know some of you don't want to hear that, and if you don't want to hear it, just turn it off. Don't listen to the video. But this is important. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because far too few people that I've met really understand that life as we know it is not only physical, but it's also spiritual. If you ignore the spiritual aspect of life, many things that are going on in the world will not make sense to you, and you won't understand why they're happening. You won't be able to explain what's going on behind the scenes. But what's going on behind the scenes is spiritual in every case. There are no exceptions. And you're going to see that clearly if you watch this video with me. Uh, the name of this gentleman is Jonathan Kahn. Jonathan Kahn is what's called a Messianic Jew. In other words, he's actually descended from a line of Jewish rabbis. And his calling in life was to be a rabbi. And he calls himself a rabbi, but he believes that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And so he's a Christian. He's a Jewish Christian. <laughs> I know that may seem like a contradiction in terms to some of you, but it's not at all. Because the reality is every single Christian is a Jew. Because we've been grafted into God's tree. But Jonathan does a lot of research and he gets inspiration from God to write books that reveal amazing things about the Bible. And this particular video, I think, is one that will open your eyes. And so I want to show it to you. I'll put the link to his channel in the description and I'll put the link to this video as well. And I highly suggest that you follow Jonathan and that you uh, listen to his sermons because he reveals truth every single time he opens his mouth. Uh, I don't know of anyone who is more tuned in to what the Word says than this man. So, without further ado... The title of this is Urgent Message From to God. I don't know why it says from to, but it does. And I've queued it up to the part that I want you to hear. And as I looked at the ancient Mesopotamian inscriptions about this goddess, I found something strange about her. First, the goddess was linked to a star or a planet, actually a planet, but they thought it, they just saw a light. It is now called Venus. That was her name in Rome. The goddess was Ashtoreth in the Bible, Ishtar in Babylon, Inanna in Sumer, Aphrodite in Greece. The planet named after her is the reason why Venus is called Venus. And it's, it would be pretty unbelievable to think that something in the sky could actually be explaining what's happening in our culture. But the Venus was called the morning star. It was also called the evening star. It was almost, they almost saw it as two different things. And so this, this goddess was represented as the morning star and the evening star. She is the, the principality that, that blurs together opposites and, and, and merges them. So in one of the inscriptions, it says, she says, I am a woman, I am a man. One of her hymns praises her, saying she is the one who has the power to turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. You want to understand what's happening in America now? It all goes back to this. This is her deeper work. 
She doesn't show it at the beginning. At the beginning, it was too radical. It's a sexual revolution. But as she takes possession of a culture, this deeper work is going to start manifesting in our culture, and it has. That's why we are seeing what we are seeing before our eyes, and this issue affects every church, every believer. It affects religious freedom. It, it will affect persecution. We're witnessing a spirit at work that blurs the line between male and female, man and woman, that bends the lines, that merges them, that confuses them, replaces one with the other. So a spirit of androgyny starts, is going to enter the culture, and so it has. It's this spirit. And so I call her in the book at this point the transformer because that's what she does. She is a seductress. But now, one of the ancient inscriptions says she grinds away the masculinity of men. So the spirit that has entered the culture seeks to emasculate men. It rages against them, as did the goddess. She challenged the authority of the, quote, patriarchy. So she destroyed her male lovers. So her spirit raged against men and male authority. Do you see that same spirit in America? It's that of, and so a spirit comes in, one could be seen in radical feminism, a rage. And, and to, to cut down, you know, many of us can remember, or some of us can remember, there was a show on television called Father Knows Best. Can you imagine a show with that title today? Now fathers are depicted as bumbling idiots or toxic. It's a strange thing we have. Because if a man is masculine, they'll say that's toxic. If a woman acts masculine, they'll say bravo. How strange is that? We have a spirit in our culture that rages against manhood. And her, it's her spirit seeks to take away men from their calling, away from fatherhood, away from marriage, away from being protectors and providers, and seeks to emasculate or feminize them. So it directs the impulse of a man that God gave to provide and protect, redirects them into video games, into pornography, and so we watch as people are taken away from their purpose. At the same time, the goddess turns women into men, it says. So we have a spirit in our culture that seeks to defeminize women, to masculinize them. Do you sense that as well? To take women away from womanhood, away from marriage, away from motherhood. An ancient inscription says she gives weapons to women, she gives spindles to men. Women taking on the attributes of men. Now, the goddess herself was female, but she had male attributes. And by doing so, she seeks to separate man and woman. Because if you can say that you can be the other, you don't need the other, you can keep them separate. And so we have a spirit that's been destroying marriage across this country. But her powers to transform go even deeper. The goddess had a mysterious priesthood. They were called the Asinu or the Gala or the Kalu in ancient Sumerian. They were men, these were her priests, men who filled her temples, who dressed in the clothing of women. It is written, she dresses men as women and women as men. They were priests under her possession. So if you see this return to our culture, men dressing as women, women as men, you know the gods are back. Do you see this in our culture? And so if it returns, and if you see it now being celebrated in our culture, what is that? Remember, Messiah said when the spirits return, they come back worse. In ancient times, she sought to possess her priesthood. But now she is seeking to possess an entire generation of children. She is seeking to confuse them. You see, the gods are after the children. Because if you can possess the children, you can possess the nation. And you can possess the future. You understand what's happening? What the gods do, what the spirits do, is they seek to destroy by taking people away from their purpose. Men from manhood, women from womanhood, marriage from marriage, children from childhood, and that's how she destroys. Messiah said the house would not remain empty. If you take now, now, now go back to when America started turning away and started, took the first thing was take prayer out of school from the children. Now look at what has come into school. Look at what has come into kindergartens. What has come in? Because Jesus said the house is not staying empty. Something else is coming in. They are now at work. But it goes even further. The goddess seeks to turn men into women in the realm of sexuality. She turns a man into a woman. She turns a woman into a man. She changes desire. One of the things the goddess did among her priesthood, listen, is she actually had them surgically transitioned. This is thousands of years ago. This is not a new thing, an enlightened thing. This is paganism. I even found an inscription.
that describes the transition priesthood of the goddess dancing before her, holding scalpels as if celebrating their transition. And now adults are doing this to children. And so many pastors are afraid to say a word about it. And so many believers are afraid to say a word. And so many parents are scared to say something. But this is madness. And we have to call it what it is. This is abuse. And don't be scared. Don't be scared, you. If you don't stand, who will stand? What on earth would possess an adult to surgically transition a child and strew their bodies for life? What would possess them? This spirit would possess them. There was one event that began this entire movement that has altered sexuality and gender in America and around the world. It happened in New York City at the end of the 1960s. There was an uprising of a same-sex bar called Stonewall. That came all the parades, came pride, all the altering. On the night the riots began, amazing, a convergence of signs linked to the goddess start appearing in New York City on the streets. We don't have time to go into it. I put this in the book, but to give a taste of it. The goddess was always linked to the gates. That was her sign, the gatepost. So it happens at, in New York City, which is the gateway of America. When she went to war, the sign that would appear was in the ancient mythology was a lion's head. So on that night, I won't go into it, but a lion's head appears. The goddess, actually, it says that she, she dwelt in taverns and alehouses. She's the patron of bars. So this whole movement began in a bar. It says when she went to war, it was called the Dance of Ishtar, that she would dance and there'd be destruction. In the middle of the riot, a whole line of people start dancing that night, and they start singing a song, the words of which go back to the tablets of the goddess. The goddess was known as Storm. They called her, you are the loud thundering storm. Well, there was a woman that night who triggered the whole movement. And she actually resembled the, what the goddess, she actually had the form, and, she, and her name was Storm A, Storm. Even, the, even that night, even, even you know, that night they sought to break into the bar, which was called Stonewall, that was the beginning of the whole movement. Stonewall, in the ancient inscriptions, it says that she is, you are the one who breaks the stone wall. Even the timing of the uprising, the movement began under the full moon of the goddess, linked to the days of the goddess, according to the calendar of the goddess. But the work of this principality is taking over the entire culture. Let me show you just some of the mysteries behind it. The ancient inscription reveals that the goddess was the one who oversaw and initiated parades. Parades. What's the sign of the goddess? Parades every year. In the summer, she would make people parade. The inscriptions describe it that the spirit of the goddess would cause men to parade in the streets of the city as women and women to parade as men. Does that sound familiar? Her parades would be filled with colors and they would be known for sexual licentiousness and the confusing of gender. Does that sound familiar? Well, they're back. This is not new. This is ancient linked to the gods. If you see this happening in your world, you know that a civilization has turned away from God. And it was through those parades that she would actually draw an entire culture into her worship. It is now happening. You see, it was only the gospel that was keeping all this away. And if we had known the mystery in the early 1960s, we could see then this is where it was going to go. You see, it's a dangerous thing, whether it's Russia putting off the gospel, becoming the Soviet Union, whether it's Germany putting off the gospel, becoming Nazi Germany. It is a dangerous thing for any, any civilization to put away the gospel because it's the only thing that's protecting it. In the ancient world and calendar, the goddess claimed an entire month as her own, in which her spirit would especially possess the culture. A month of rituals, processions, sexual licentiousness. What month was it? I looked at the ancient writings of the first believers. I looked at the writings of Saint Jerome, because he identified it. And you know what he called? He said, this is, this is the month where all these festivals take place. He called it in Latin, the month of Junium or the month of June. June. Now it was actually Constantine that stopped this. It was actually the prevailing of the gospel that stopped this from happening. Do you ever think it's strange that every year all around the world that nations that give one day to celebrate their birth give 30 days to celebrate a form of sexuality? Is that strange? That is not natural. That is supernatural. June, you know, the, the goddess was called the goddess of pride. So we have an entire month called Pride Month. The parable says the spirit will return to the house it once dwelt in. 
The goddess had once inhabited June, so, so now she comes back and she has taken possession of June. The goddess was also linked to a sign. What was the sign? It was the sign of the rainbow. It is written she had rainbow eyes. One of the ancient inscriptions reads, puts two words together in, in the ancient dialect, Manzat Ishtar, which translated means rainbow Ishtar. Why is this sign taking over the culture? Why, because it, why is it connected to altered sexuality? Because it was connected to this goddess who's the goddess of altered sexuality. That's why the sign of the rainbow is now flying all across the world on American embassies. That is why the sign of the rainbow is on cereal, children's cereal boxes in your supermarket. That's why it's on children's cartoons. That's why every, almost every major corporation puts it up. It's not natural, it's supernatural. In the book, um, we won't go into it, but I show that every color of the rainbow is linked to the goddess, every color of this flag. Now, of course, the rainbow belongs to God, not to man and not to anything else, not to any movement. The rainbow actually belongs to God. But you see, in the myth of the goddess, she actually is the goddess who steals things from other gods and claims it as her own. So this, to take the sign of God and to put it in the face of God, this is a defiance to God. It's putting it in his face. And the sign that was about God, a God sparing a nation or sparing a people from judgment, it was his mercy to put this in his face. That's a dangerous thing. And there's a dark ancient secret to the rainbow and the goddess, I speak of in the book, what it, what it really means, and if people knew it, they'd have second thoughts of ever holding it up. Could the mystery even lie behind the Supreme Court, between the rulings of the Supreme Court? The time that the goddess especially claimed, we said, was early summer, June. Specifically the last days of June, around the time of the summer solstice, that was always a pagan time. There were three Supreme Court rulings that altered sexuality and marriage in America. The first happened in 2003, normalized altered sexuality. The second happened in 2013, the striking down of the Defense of Marriage Act. The third, we all remember, was the striking down of marriage as we know it. The altering of sexuality in 2003 happened in the month of June, last days of June, wake of the summer solstice, the days of the goddess on June 26. The second, the striking down of the defense of marriage, happened in the month of June, last days of June, wake of the summer solstice, days of the goddess, same day, June 26. The third, in 2015, the striking down of marriage as we know it came in June, last days of June, came the wake of the summer solstice, days of the goddess, on the same exact day. June 26, all of them happened on the same day. That day is linked to the mystery of the goddess. They had no idea. The Supreme Court had no idea. It's not about people. It's, it's the manifesting of this. And on one of those days, remember when marriage was basically changed. Remember that day? And that night, the White House was lit up in the colors of the rainbow. Remember that? That was a sign from the principality saying, now I possess the White House. Now I can possess America. That night, here's a mystery. On the ancient calendar, it was the 10th of Tammuz, the 10th day of the ancient month of Tammuz. That's in the Bible. That's a, that, that date is also that, the calendar of Babylon. That day that legalized a man marrying a man, a woman marrying a woman. I found on the ancient Babylonian calendar that that day, the 10th of Tammuz, was the day ordained for the casting of a spell to cause a man to love a man. Remember, the goddess was the one who transitions one thing into its opposite. So the big picture is she's transitioning America. She's transitioning a Christian America or Judeo-Christian nation into a pagan America. What is the agenda of the gods? What is their end game? They've come back with a vengeance. You see, they were cast out of the ancient world by the word of God. They're trying, that's why they're trying now to cast the word of God out of our culture. I'm not going to play any more of it. If you want to watch the whole thing, the link will be in the description. What I want you to understand, if you don't already, is that everything that goes on in the world has a spiritual impetus behind it, a spiritual reason for it. I don't know if you've ever wondered, you know, why do the gays use a rainbow flag? Now you know. It's related to an ancient goddess. We modern people think that we're so smart that we don't need God 
anymore. It's a silly superstition, we say. We can put it off because we're smart enough to take care of ourselves. <laughs> Psalm 14.1 says, The fool saith in his heart there is no God. And that's just as true today as the day it was written. There, there aren't any coincidences. It's not a coincidence that gays chose the rainbow flag. It's not, not a coincidence that it started in New York. It's not a coincidence that it's gone over the whole nation to the point where the White House is displaying the rainbow flag. These are not coincidences. These are not just random events. These are not things that people decided. All of this is in the spiritual realm. All of this is caused by spirits. Because America has turned away from God, she has also turned towards the devil. And that's the reason why you see everything that's going on today. Ecclesiastes says there's nothing new under the sun. None of this is new. This all goes back to ancient, ancient times. If you don't understand that, if you don't believe that, then you're, 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 you're scrounging around in the dark trying to figure out why is all this stuff happening? What, what's going on? What, why is this going happening like it is? But if you understand the spiritual realm and you understand how the spiritual realm interacts with our physical realm, then you will understand why these things are occurring. And it, it might be a cause of concern or it might be a cause of you wanting to say, uh, I want to change this, but you can't change it. Only God can do that. God's the one you have to call on to make those changes. God's the one who has to defeat the adversary, not us. I don't know what what the future is for America. We have an election on Monday, or Tuesday, excuse me, tomorrow. Uh, but if you put your faith in whoever gets elected, you're a fool. Because they're not in control, the spirits are. The only question is, which spirit will control America? Will it be God or will it be the adversary? And the sooner that you realize that the spiritual realm is what's causing all of this stuff that's going on, everything that's going on, the sooner you realize that, the sooner that you'll realize that if you turn to God, you'll be protected. And if you don't, you won't. It's really that simple. Now, I'm going to get back to doing my music, but I hope that you will have watched this and listened to me talk about it, and I hope that you will take it to heart. Consider it carefully and think about what it means for you in your life. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.